I want to take this opportunity to welcome uh, Bishop. He is going to uh, have them stage now. Let us just celebrate God by standing up. Let us give the man of God ovation. Amen. Let's lift up our hands to the Father. We want to say this prayer together that God has been faithful to us. I want you to let your heart also appreciate the grace that is working upon us. To live is by God's grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of the moment that you've given us to be in your presence. You are so good, you are so kind. We've experienced your grace every single day. Thank you for fighting our battles as a church. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for giving us good health. Father, we want to thank you even for giving us families. You've given us children. You've given us even relatives. We want to thank you, Jehovah, that you've provided to every single need in each and every one of us. We want to thank you that even as we continue in this season of prayer, God, you are hearing us. You've continued to answer our prayers. Father, we know in the spiritual world, many things are taking place. But one thing we are assured is that among many things, your hand is at work to lift us to the next level. We thank you, Father, for the development of this church. We appreciate you, God. Even as we speak of owning our land, we are praying for divine provision. We pray for divine direction, even to get these resources. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. Today, even as we continue to share your word, Father teachers, we want to be prayer warriors. We desire to be effective in our prayers. We desire Jehovah to be great intercessors. We desire Jehovah to stand in the gap, even for many others and nations, for the glory and honor of your name. We worship you and we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your right hand on your head and let's say this is my time to feed on the word of life from God. I will never be the same again. My life will rise to its real meaning and to the purpose of God for which I was born. So help me, O oh God. Amen. Why don't you give the Lord a mighty hand and appreciate it? Yeah, let's do it again. Let's give him a mighty clap. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. Time may not allow us to sing now, but anytime I call you when we are taking offering, please join me. And we will have a song together. God bless you. Let's appreciate the praise and worship team. Amen. The Lord bless you. You may be seated, brothers and sisters. And uh, we want to go to the word of God. As I share the word of God, I want to let you know I'm born again. I bless the Lord for keeping me saved and and in good uh, health and I appreciate the loving kindness of the Lord. We are serving God in different ways and I believe wherever you are, even as a member of this church, you're also desiring to serve, desiring to do something in the kingdom of God. There is no idleness in the kingdom of God and especially this this season of prayer. You may not get an opportunity to come and preach here, but please get an opportunity to go on your knees and stand in the gap and pray and believe God for the growth of the ministry 
and the Lord is going to bless you. I want us to study a topic I'm calling today, Making Meaningful Intercessions. Give us the heading first, Making Meaningful Intercessions. We are dealing with the intercessions, I'm a, what we are saying, intercessory prayers. And I want us to look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. Let's read Philippians. That's a letter that was written by Apostle Paul to the church in Philippi. And I want us to get into the meaning of this when we talk of making meaningful intercessions. We're going to have our prayers bringing impact. We want to be intercessors. This is the season for that. And I'm so delighted when I teach on this because I know you have the time to do it practically. Once we mention it here, you have more time to make it practical. The Bible says in this verse 3, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Verse 4. Always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with the joy. Let's post there. I want you to see something so important with us today. And we need to grow in this. We need to develop this. Apostle Paul is giving us a pattern and the art, the art, the, 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 it's like um, the skill. When you talk of intercessions, praying for others, standing in the gap, making prayers on behalf of others. Apostle Paul is a very good example. He is talking of remembering them. Intercessors keep memory of people of things. He says, I, he says, I'm remembering you always in every prayer of mine, making a request for you, for all of you, uh, for you all with the joy. Now, when we talk as a church, brothers and sisters, we need to raise the level and the platform of intercessions. We need to bring ourselves on our knees so that we remember others. We are living in an era, a time when things have crowded over your life. Issues about you, yourself, your family, you. But it's a high time we ask God to help us. That amidst all this, we need to stretch further and touch another person's lives. We need to intercede for our brothers and sisters. We need to ask God to raise that spirit in us, the spirit of intercessory. Days are gone when Christians only expected the pastors and the clergy to be standing in the gap for them. The ball has changed goalposts. I want to tell you, you need there as a church member, as a church leader, as you expect the blessings from the servant of God, you stand in the gap to intercede for them. Praise the Lord. The time we are living in, the church has gotten a revolution. These are not the days when we were expecting only the priest to come and do everything. Intercede for us. Listen to us as we confess. Days are like this. We are all in the vineyard. We are all in the battlefield. And you need to rise up, my brother, my sister, and become an intercessor. And remember others in your, in, your, in your prayers. And you find Apostle Paul very keen. He is saying, for you all. He's not leaving any behind. He is talking of standing in the gap, remembering them in the prayer, all of them. I want you to see what he was praying for. 
for the church at Philippi. Look at chapter, verse, verse number 9, the same chapter, verse 9. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. That's a very strong prayer. We also need to do the same. We are living in dangerous times. Let's intercede for one another that the love for Christ may abound, that we may live in the true love and the knowledge and discernment, that we may sense the days that we are living in, so that we may not get into danger. Verse number 10 says, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. So he is talking of preparation for eternity. Let me ask you, this last week of our 21 days, can you make a prayer of substance? Start in the gap and pray for preparation of Christians for eternity. That before Christ comes back, they shall be sincere. They shall live excellently. This is our desire. That the church may stand firm. That the church may overcome. We are not just praying that our brothers may be in good health. Your sisters may be blessed with the money. Their children to go to school. We are going beyond. We want to pray that the church of Jesus Christ may walk in excellence. Somebody say amen. Raise your intercessions. Make the intercessions of your heart meaningful. Very important. Verse number 11, 11 says, Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. That is a very strong intercession. Praying that the church may arise, that the church may awake, that the church may bear fruit, that the church may walk to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. Listen to me, Jesus New Life Ministries. We are called upon to be intercessors. We are called upon to intercede. Yes, God may specifically raise some people, especially to be called intercessors. But all of us are called to the field to intercede one for another. Somebody say amen. Let me give one example of our father of faith, Abraham. We say it in Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter number 18. We look at verse 22. There is something that happened with the, with the man of God, Abraham. I, I want to give you the, the background information before I read that verse. You know very well, when Abraham and Lot parted ways, Abraham went to the mountains and to the hills. And you, you remember how he lived. He was God fearing. Lot was in the plains, even extending to Sodom. But one time, the Bible records of a visit, that is in chapter 18 of Genesis, that God visited Abraham. I like mentioning it very clearly. When the Bible talks of three men coming to visit in the tent of Abraham, you discover by reading the whole chapter that one of the men was God. Okay, we talk of the pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus Christ. That he appeared in the Old Testament in the form of many things. One time in the wilderness, he was the rock. And that was Christ. There's a time he could appear and he appeared in the form of an angel many times. And um, that's where you find the writers of the Bible, especially New King James, they are very keen where they put capital A, angel. When they are talking of the angel in the middle of a sentence and you see capital A, not small A for the angel, you discover they identify that that angel 
is the pre-incarnate appearance of Jesus. And so this time, when they came, the Bible says the three men visited Abraham. And you remember how he behaved. Abraham was very quick, very sensitive to see, hey, my Lord, do not pass by. Get in. Have something to eat. And you know he prepared Nyamachoma and told Sarah to prepare chapati and dengu. And this food was prepared for these three men. And after they ate, this is where the story comes in. They are leaving the blessings for Abraham. That is the time they said, your wife, next year, time like this one, will hold a baby boy. And when they were leaving, this is what the Bible records. God said to himself, am I going to destroy Sodom and hide it from my friend Abraham? So God revealed to Abraham, I am on my way. This is my next assignment. I'm going to destroy a Sodom and Gomorrah. But you remember that time, the Bible says, as the men, that is verse 22, then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Verse 23, the Bible says, and Abraham came near and said, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Now, Abraham is standing. I want you to mark the word still standing. When you find still standing, it is an indicator of patience. He may have taken several hours standing before the Lord. Intercessions are made by patient people. Not people who are technically appearing. If you are a technical appearer in the presence of God, you don't make meaningful intercessions. Hello, somebody. I like what Alois was saying here. That yes, we are busy. But the three days, that is Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Those three days this week. Let us still stand. Still has two meaning. Still is even. And also still means stillness. You are cool there. This man still stood before the Lord. He was standing there. What is he doing? He is interceding. And I want to say again, men and women of God, I'm ushering you into the arena of intercessory. And I keep telling you, if you have nothing to intercede for, you have one man called Bishop Makime. You can go on your knees and be still there interceding for him. Praise the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, if you look at this, he is now standing before the Lord to intercede. What is he doing? When he starts before the Lord, he is thinking about Sodom and Gomorrah because he has a relative there. This is a man who is asking God, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? In other words, God, why don't you consider that they can't all be wicked? Please consider. Don't destroy everything and everybody. Verse 24, the Bible says, suppose there were 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Look at the intercessions. God have mercy. Because of the righteous, do not destroy the city. Many people think that Abraham was interceding only for the righteous. That he, you spare the righteous and perhaps destroy the rest. No. An intercessor is not that selective. An intercessor would wish that all may be saved. All 
may be rescued. All may be spared. And look at this. When it comes to this, verse number 25, the Bible says, far be it from you to do such a thing. God is not talking. All this time it is Abraham talking. God is not answering. But he is interceding. He is saying far be it from you to do such a thing as this. To slay the righteous with the wicked. So that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Verse 26. So the Lord said. Now here. If I fight in Sodom 50 righteous within the city then I will spare all the place for their sakes. For the righteous I will spare the cities. I will spare the place. Now let me tell the righteous people if you didn't know you are privileged if you didn't know you are right if you didn't know the way God has elevated you. That because of you. Even the wicked can be spared. If you knew this. You would stand in the gap. Let me tell you. Kenya is not waiting. For the craftiness. And the philosophical ideas. Of the wise men. Kenya needs. The standing. Of the righteous men. And the women. Kenya is waiting for you and I. People ready to stand and say, for Christ's sake, through which we have received our cleansing, and we have received the righteousness that comes by faith through the gospel of Christ, Father, we stand in the gap, and we believe that our nation will be spared. Your family is not waiting for the best child you have, the best in business, the best in education, your family is waiting for righteousness to stand. Standing still before the Lord. And God says, for the sake of the righteous, I will spare the cities. I will spare the place. Let's make our intercessions meaningful. Look at the next verse, 27. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed now, I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Continue. Give us one more and then we'll be done. Suppose there were five less than the fifty righteous. Would you destroy all of the city for lack of five? So he said, If I fight there forty-five, I will not destroy. Let me stop there. And I show you this, that there is need to stand in the gap. This is Abraham interceding. And let me tell you, this is why Lot was rescued. Lot, Mrs. Lot, and the daughters, they were rescued from this particular prayer of intercessory. Let me give you three three factors or three qualities of an intercessor as we continue. Number one, an intercessor and I want you to check yourself and desire to be part of this. Number one, an intercessor is very sensitive. Somebody say sensitivity. Come on, say it louder. There must be sensitivity in the heart of an intercessor. Intercessors are people who can sense things in the spiritual, in the emotional, in the social aspect and even physically. They have the sense. They, they, are, they are sensitive even to get what direction is the Lord taking us. In a church like this one, do you know what happens with the intercessors? Intercessors can follow even the summons of the man of God and they can detect what prayer should be made for the church. 
Intercessors are sensitive. Sensitive in this sense. They are able to discern even the direction and the movement of the nation. Intercessors by being sensitive they don't wait until things grow as they are sensitive and they get to stand in the gap they get to pray abraham did not delay by thinking maybe i think i'll pray later i think god will not do it but when the word was mentioned by god that i'm going to do this to sodom and gomorrah the sensitivity of the man of God was stirred and he stood in the gap. He stood before the Lord asking God to rescue the cities. You need to be sensitive. And that's why I say intercessors can even surround you even before you tell them anything. They can sense what you need before the Lord intercessors are sensitive they can even tell when the church is divided and they don't go talking they go praying they don't go talking they go praying praise the Lord intercessors are sensitive even to carry the burdens of the others praise the Lord intercessors. I like the way Jesus taught us as an example and I think it's in John 17 that he interceded. He went and prayed for himself. Then he went on to pray for the disciples asking God to sustain them. Father I don't ask you to remove them from this world but keep them safe. After that, he went to the third stage and he interceded for others who will come and join the church. He interceded. And that's why even today, according to the right of Hebrews, Jesus is at the right heart of God interceding for you and I. He is an intercessor. And imagine he is God, but he intercedes. He speaks on behalf of you and I before the Father. So that's why I'm saying the, the intercessor must remain sensitive. If you are a, an intercessor mother at home, you don't just open your mouth and speak anyhow. Intercessory mothers are very good at taking things to God in prayer even before they are known by others. They don't waste intercessory fathers and mothers, parents. They don't waste their energy complaining. More of their energy is on their knees as they seek God. As they intercede that the healing may come upon the family. Listen to me, Christians. It is this time I'm ushering you to the arena of meaningful intercessions put it in your heart that when you look at your sister or a brother in the church you are even eager just to get his or her name is your name Jean? is your name James yes then you carry that name to God in prayer praise the Lord yesterday I was somewhere after sharing with a certain family. Then I stood by and one of the daughters of the family came and looking at her. I know her, but looking at her and the, the parents were shocked. I looked at her and come. Why are you stressed? And it was like, what have you said? What have you seen? So I took her out. She never disclosed. She gave me a different story. But later as I was about to go, the mother asked me, did she tell you her problem? 
When I said the problem, she said, they told me, no, please don't go. She has to tell you the truth. And then the truth was revealed. But I carried that prayer item because it was made to my senses. And I said, oh, I'm preparing to teach on intercession. So it is so practical, I can sense that. Let me tell you, you are given the grace. The moment you continue interceding for others, God increases and accelerates the grace of sensitivity. But if you are careless, if you are loose, if you say anything anyhow, anywhere, let me tell you, you may lose that grace, that flow of intercessory sensitivity. We need to know that as Christians. Praise the Lord. Number two, I've said number one, an intercessor is sensitive. Number two, an intercessor is selfless. You are not selfish. Intercessors will never be selfish. You must be selfless. In other words, it's not about you. I told you in the beginning, we are living in a time when situations and programs are demanding that you concentrate on yourself. But I want to tell you, an intercessor will break the limits and go beyond the self and you become selfless. An intercessor can close the doors of his or her room and pray when the next door the people he is praying for are feasting on Nyamachoma but he is not there. He is blessing them and speaking blessings upon their lives. If you are, if you are selfish you would say ah kwani nini? Kwani ni mimi peke yangu? I can also enjoy like them. No. An intercessor can intercede even for one who is hiding a weapon to kill him. And can intercede that God may change him and save him and give him eternal life. Intercessors are not self selfish. You need to ask God. We need to ask God to help us that as we continue in prayer, that we make meaningful intercessions by breaking selfishness. An intercessor is generous with his or her time. Generous even with the words of encouragement. An intercessor is not selfish. A time like this we are looking at things in this country. Yes, they look very comfortable as they go shouting and saying all manner of things. They have occupied the year 2022, these politicians. But we are the people to intercede and pray for them. Do you know what you can do in a country like this one? Yes, I know you are also human beings. You may have a candidate of your choice. As you pray for the candidate of your choice, you also pray for the candidate opposing your choice. Intercessors pray widely. You cover them. You pray for protection. That is the way to go. Intercessors should not be selfish. Number three. Then I close and continue with something else. Number three. An intercessor is secretive. Secretive. An intercessor is a person of secret. Praise the Lord. If you, are a, if you are going to be an effective intercessor, you must know how to keep secrets. Intercessors are not loose-mouthed. Intercessors keep secrets. Anytime you stay with a Christian who claims to be a prayer warrior, but is a gossiper, is open, too loose, then you don't see an intercessor there. Intercessors know how to keep secrets. 
if you go with a good intercessor, he may know you are so many things, even your weaknesses, but you'll never hear them with anybody else. He gets to know, he gets to pray, he stands in the gap, and you are safe. But any intercessor who is loose that you are with them praying for something about your program and your project and then the next week somebody is greeting you from nowhere. Hey, I heard how things are. Then you know there is a leakage. That is not an intercessor. An intercessor can fight you next to death. And when God raises you up, that intercessor will keep that secret and maintain you at that level that you are still strong. Nobody will get to know of your weakness. The problem with today and in the body of Christ today is that everybody wants to take glory. Ah, do you see him? Hey, it's only that I went to Katoroni for him. I prayed and I fasted for one week for him. Everybody wants to take glory. May God forbid. Intercessors are secretive. These are people who can pray the whole night for you. But they will not let you know. But the moment you find somebody telling you, hey, for two days I have not slept. I have been praying for you. Then check the motive. Check the motive. If he is giving you a testimony of something else, it's okay. But if somebody brags that he is interceding for you, the same way he will tell another one. When he is dozing somewhere, he wants people to know that the whole night I was praying for my brother Beria, you know. <laughs> so he wants people to know that's not an intercessor. Secrets are very, very important to keep. Do you know why? When you keep secrets as an intercessor, God continues to reveal things to you. If you keep secrets for your brother, your sister, God will continue allowing you to hold, to uphold that person in prayer. But if you lose, you are loose and you open up, you release it. You gossip about it. You lose your ministry there. May God give us grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And I say again, an intercessor keeps secret because you are not after glory. You are not after carrying glory. When people succeed and you are interceding for them, let God receive all the glory. Praise the Lord. It's important. I have a few minutes to show you something. Let me, let me show you something concerning our prayers as intercessors and even personal prayers. What he does, our prayers, what he does, God from answering our prayers. Let me touch a few things here. Let me touch a few things. Number one, if you, if you have never known why prayer is unanswered, the reason number one, that is Psalm 66 verse 18. I think one time I read this verse, but I want you to see it as a hindrance to answering of your prayers. Number one is when you cherish sin in heart. When you cherish, when you embrace sin in your heart. The psalmist says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Are you getting? The Lord will not hear. So you may pray, talk to God and all this. But if you have regarded sin in your heart, and mark those words, in your heart. In other words, a sin appearing in the physical 
you refuse to fight it. You refuse to overcome temptations. You allow sin to reside even in your heart. In other words, you live like you enjoy sinning. It's not a struggle to you. It's like it's okay. The moment you regard iniquity, then God will not hear. So that's one. Number two, when you are praying to be seen, to be known, that is Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. Let's, let me show you this. Jesus said it very clearly. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray studying in the synagogues and on the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. Praying to be seen by men. That they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Verse number six. But you, when you pray, now I want to, to correct some theology here. When you pray, go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Are you getting that? Now you close and shut the doors. What do I want to correct here? Many Christians read this verse and they refuse to talk loudly when they are praying. They say, Jesus said, you shut in yourself. Look at that first and you tell me where volume is mentioned. Is there a volume mentioned? The volume of your voice. It's not mentioned. Jesus only said, appearance. So that you, you are not seen by people. You get that? But he says, you pray in the secret. And God who sees, the Father who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Now, very important to know that the moment you are praying for others to see you, like the Pharisees, the hypocrites, they are called hypocrites, do not love to pray for people to see you. If they see you by chance, no problem. But that is not your motive. You didn't want people to see how you pray. You are given a chance to pray. You are not even talking to God. You are mindful about the people looking at you and listening to you. By the way, people should not even hear what you are saying. They should concentrate to that God you are praying. You may use any language. You may use English. You may talk in any other language, but listen to me. Language is only a means of communication. Be unto God. You are talking to the Father. He is the one hearing. He is the one seeing. That is the thing to do. And number three, I'm talking about what makes our prayers unanswered. Number three, wavering in faith. James chapter one. Give us James chapter one, verse six. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the weed. Verse 7. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Verse 8. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. So, in our prayers, we need to ensure that our faith is stable. Faith must remain stable. We don't need to waver. We don't need to take options when the option was only prayer. You don't need to be called from your prayer closet for another alternative when you are determined to pray and seek God for a solution. It's good not to waver. Many people have wavered in faith 
whereby today I'm praying. But after two hours, I know, even if God does not answer, I know I'm expecting from so and so. And sometimes you end up getting so frustrated. May God keep our faith and help our faith to be firm without wavering. He says, Do, that man should don't think that he will get anything in those prayers. Number four, we also miss answers to our prayers when we pray with carnal desires or motives. Carnal, flesh. Selfish desire. James chapter 4, verse 3. That one is known by many people. You ask, so that means you pray and do not receive. Why? Because you ask a beast. You ask in the wrong way that you may spend it on your pleasures. Imagine, you are busy praying, but you are asking God to give you that good dress, that good food to eat, just to show others that I'm also taking pleasure. I'm also enjoying myself. You are asking God to bless you with that child you are looking for. Yet it's not for God's glory. It is just to make you pleasurable. To feel pleasant. Not for the glory of God. That is the wrong motive. And I said one time, you may be praying for somebody in your family to get saved. Don't pray for them to get saved so that they stop misusing the fudge and the resources in the family. Pray that they may gain eternal life. Have the right motive, the right direction. It's needed. Amen. So motives are checked. If whatever you are asking for, you want for your own pleasure, this is where you find God will not give you that which will take you out of him. And if he gives you, then that is what is called the permissive will of God and not the perfect will of God. You need to walk in the perfect will of God. If you push him, he might give you, but not his perfect will. The Israelites demanded to have a king, just like other nations. God sent people, he sent Samuel, tell them, I am their king. Another human being ruling over them will mistreat them, will walk, will go with their girls. But they insisted until God said, okay, fine, you take. And he gave them soul. But remember the things he had told them. They came to pass. We as intercessors, as prayer warriors, we desire to have the right motive. May whatever we get through our prayers be for the glory of God. To build God's kingdom. To build our lives for the sake of the kingdom of God. That's why I keep saying, even the next model of a car that you are looking for, attach it to the right motive. It is for the glory of God. When the desire, the motive is clean, you are there to get your prayer answered. Number five, we miss answers to our prayers when we disregard the poor and the needy. Proverbs 21 verse 13. Proverbs 21 verse 13. Look at that. Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, we also cry himself and not be heard. This one applies physically, spiritually, in all areas. Whoever shuts his ears to the cry of the poor, a, a poor person, I need the person is crying. And you assume you neglect that. You disregard that. What happens? One day you cry and you will not be heard. Actually, when we are giving food to the hungry, 
giving whatever they need. We are actually making our spiritual life smooth. We are making our prayers to have breakthroughs. Some things we do without knowing, but what you are doing, helping the needy, you are making your cry to God to be heard. That's why Cornelius, that is chapter 10 of Acts, Cornelius was very keen, did two things, giving to the needy and praying. Giving to the needy and pray. So one day, heaven opened for him. And he, you see, the word was very clear that his prayer has reached me. That is God. His prayer has reached me. In other words, helping the poor and the needy is another channel where your prayer follows and is heard by God. Praise the Lord. God has the poor and the needy at heart. And that's why I keep saying, if you mistreat them, you are touching God's apple of the eye. Why? Because God is the father to the fatherless. is the husband to the widow. And so, justice for them comes from him. And that's why you find in the same Proverbs you find there is a verse in a proverb saying I think 1917 or 1719 that he who helps the needy the poor is giving a loan to God and God will surely repay. It's very important when we think of the poor let them also be in our senses, in our mind, that as we help them, we are making breakthroughs for our prayers. Number six, and this is the last one maybe I'll mention here. For the married people, your prayers will not be answered when you collide with your spouse. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. First Peter chapter 3 verse 7. Look at this. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Mark those words. Your spouse, your husband, or is your wife? Mark this. Ashes, please be be sensitive. We 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 look at this. We look at this very clearly as I wind up here. Peter is advising the married people. If at all you are living together, they are in the same house. Watch, take care, ensure that you are moving smoothly. I don't mean there are no mountains and valleys, they are there. If you are not married, try this and you find it. But the point here is if you want to pray, you want to seek God. Be like one offering a sacrifice where Jesus said, if you are at the altar you want to offer and you remember there is a brother, there is somebody you are in conflict. Leave the sacrifice there. Go and make ways with him. Then come and continue. It applies in marriage. There are some very prayerful people in the marriage but their prayers are heeded. They don't get answers to their prayers simply because they have ignored a very sensitive area, the relationship, wife and husband. Why? Because between the two, there is a covenant. And I'll tell you this, covenant speak. 
So if this one is messy, if there's something wrong about it, and you're still together, you have not divorced, you have not separated, you are together, then do, do the wise thing and ensure you are making wish. Don't copy this, but I will tell you, when I was beginning ministry with these young children, and sometimes I will get annoyed. Sometimes I'm looking at her, it's like she's not understanding. One thing I've trained in myself, I keep asking myself, how is my heart? And especially when wicked is near. And I will tell wives, please do not uh, manipulate. Because I hear of other homes, not yours. I hear of other homes where the wife can really miss the husband and ensure you'll have no peace. And more so on Saturday evening and Sunday morning so that the husband will not enjoy the worship. May I tell you, if you behave like that, then you are becoming the agent of the devil. You are distorting. Be one who is free. Ensure you made ways. We all need answers to our prayers. Amen. Praise the Lord. Men, listen to me. Your spouse, your wife could be the best intercessor in the church. The best intercessor in the village. Please give her peace. Ensure you are making ways. She needs to serve in that ministry. Do not be careless. Do not be loose to spoil that which has been given to your spouse so that the prayers may be answered. Let's stand on our feet. We'll continue in the Kikuyu service. But uh, looking at the, the intercessory prayers, in two minutes I would wish to ask you just talk to God about your heart, your life, your ministry of prayer. We all need to pray. We all need to intercede. We all need to stand in the gap. We all need to ask God to hear us. Among the three things I've said, sensitivity, selflessness, being secretive, check those three areas and align yourself. Number two, the hindrances to the answers to our prayers. Check your life. Could you be in any of those and you are praying, no results. Prayers are not being answered. There are so many others, but I've touched a few. I want you to ask God to help you. Let's bow wherever you are. Say a prayer. Open your mouth. Say a prayer in the name of Jesus. Believe God that he is hearing you as you invite his presence. Inviting the Holy Spirit to help you. To overcome these challenges. To overcome these hindrances and limitations that hinder the answers to our prayers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, we believe that we shall receive answers. This is our prayer this hour. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today we declare the goodness of the Lord. Even in our meaningful intercessions. God we desire to stand in the gap. We desire Father to be prayer warriors. Mighty God in the name of Jesus. We know we are living in the battlefield. Give us the grace and the ability. Even to still stand in your presence. To stand before you king of glory. And Jehovah there are so many interactions. There are so many interferences. My God there are so many. Uh, distractions are coming our way. But we desire to be still before the Lord. We desire to have an army. God raise an army of intercessors in this ministry. Raise an army, an army of intercessors in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my God. Thank you, Lord Jehovah. 
we give you all the glory and all the praise as we lift our faith unto you. My God, help us. We desire to break through in prayer. We desire to break through in prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord, this week, as your people get to pray, as your people get to intercede, as your people flow in the word, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, Master, remind them of these things, oh God. Remind them, Jehovah. Help them, Father, in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, we exhort you. Let's lift up our hands together as I say this prayer. Father, upon this congregation, I invite your spirit, the Holy Spirit who, according to Romans chapter 8 verse 26, makes intercessions for us with the groanings that words cannot express. I pray, Father, may the Holy Spirit lift us all into this arena of prayer and intercessory. We desire to make meaningful intercessions. My God, in the name of Jesus, release upon each one of them and the grace of sensitivity. In the name of Jesus, I pray pray God that you help us not to be selfish in Jesus name that we may be intercessors with the substance oh God Father I pray teach us even to keep secret oh God that all the glory may be yours we desire that honor and glory as shall be yours oh Lord thank you Father we give you glory Master I pray raise in this church an army of intercessors an army of prayer warriors my God for this is what we need this is our urgent need my God in the name of Jesus we've heard the people of excellence we've heard the people of philosophy we've heard the people of knowledge we've heard the people of other gifts my God raise in this ministry a team and a body a band and even an army of intercessors my God we desire that you speak to them individually that you speak to the women and speak to the men and speak to the young and to the old and speak even to the young children a concerning standing still before the Lord my God I cover this week as we continue with the chain of prayer and fasting Lord I believe that your people will make it meaningful I pray that Wednesday and Thursday and Friday shall be great days of breakthrough Master we thank you may people be availed into the house of the Lord may people be available in the presence of the Lord Father we thank you we worship you. God, I pray that you forgive us, forgive intercessors for where they have been loose, where they have missed, where they may have failed to keep secrets. God, I pray in the name of Jesus, give us grace and enable us. We thank and we honor your name. Blessed be thy name. We worship you.